include cobras, crocodiles, vultures, falcons, quails, and cows. Many animals were drawn in hieroglyphic symbols, and some were honored as gods. Hieroglyphs Egyptians were writing with picture symbols called hieroglyphs as early as 3000 BC. Some hieroglyphs represented an object. For example, wavy lines stood for water, and a bird was a bird. But a picture could also stand for an idea. Walking feet meant movement or the passage of time. Some hieroglyphic symbols were homophones, words that sound alike but have different meanings. For example, the pharaoh Narmer's name was written as N apostrophe R, fish, plus M R, chisel. Vowel sounds were often left out. Some symbols stood for sounds. Others showed whether a word was singular or plural, or a noun or a verb. By 300 BC, the Egyptian alphabet consisted of more than 700 hieroglyphic symbols. A loop with the royal name inside it was called a cartouche. You can make your cartouche using the symbol shown in the hieroglyphic chart. Life Everlasting the age of 110 was believed to be the perfect lifespan, but it was more an ideal than a reality. Most people in those days did not live past their 30s. Hieroglyphs covered this obelisk at Luxor Temple. But every Egyptian, from pharaoh to laborer, believed in life after death. Given the proper burial rites, they could be immortal. The Egyptians believed that the jackal-headed god Anubis escorted each soul into the afterlife. Osiris, god of the underworld, made a final judgment by the weighing of the heart. A feather was put on one side of a scale, and the person's heart on the other side. If the heart was as light as the feather, the soul could enter eternity. Egyptians also believed that the dead would enjoy all their earthly comforts in the afterlife. Burial chambers were filled with favorite possessions, clothes, furniture, games, and food. Even pet cats were preserved and buried with their masters. Mummies After death, the body was made into a mummy to keep it from decaying. This ensured a successful journey into the afterlife. Mummification could take as long as 70 days. First, the body was packed in a salt called natron, which dried the tissues and kept them from breaking down. Then the internal organs were removed. Some were preserved in jars and buried with the body. Other organs were treated with herbs and replaced in the body. The brain, believed to be worthless, was thrown away. Embalming fluids and pastes were then applied to preserve the skin and the body's interior. Finally, the body was wrapped round and round with white linen strips. Mummies of some pharaohs were encased in jewel-encrusted gold and placed in a sarcophagus or stone coffin, a mummified body. In the burial chamber, scrolls of the Book of the Dead were buried with the body. They contained special prayers and instructions for getting through the mysterious world of the dead. Pyramids to make sure they would have eternal life, pharaohs built fabulous tombs for themselves. The earliest pharaohs built tombs called mastabas, low, flat-topped mud-brick structures with slanting sides. Djoser, a pharaoh of the Third Dynasty, wanted a more glorious tomb, so his architect, Imhotep, built the first pyramid. It is called a step pyramid because its sides are like stair steps. Djoser's Step Pyramid still stands at Zakara, near Memphis. Fourth Dynasty pharaohs built the most famous pyramids. The Three Pyramids of Giza, just west of Cairo. Khufu built the largest one, called the Great Pyramid, around 2600 BC. These are two of the Three Pyramids of Giza. The Capped Pyramid of Khafre stands behind the Great Pyramid, also known as the Pyramid of Khufu. Great Pyramid Facts Height, 481 feet, 147 meters, taller than a 40-story building. Length of one side, 755 feet, 230 meters, or one-seventh of a mile. Area covered, 13 acres, 5 hectare, 
or about seven city blocks. Number of limestone blocks, about 2.5 million. Average weight of a block, 2.5 tons. Weight of heaviest blocks, 15 tons. Contents, stolen by grave robbers, probably in ancient times. This is a side view of the Great Sphinx in Giza, Egypt. The Pyramid of Khufu looms in the background. Khufu's pyramid was made of limestone blocks covered with sheer granite slabs that glistened in the sun. People could slide right down the sides. In later centuries, the granite was removed to make buildings in Cairo. Khufu's son, Khafre, and the pharaoh, Menkaur, built the two other Giza pyramids. Nearby stands the Great Sphinx, a massive stone lion with the head of a man. How did they build the pyramids? The ancient Egyptians left only a few clues about how they built the pyramids. From rock quarries at Aswan, stone blocks were floated down the Nile on rafts for 500 miles, 800 kilometers. Then the blocks were probably put on runners, like sleds, and hauled up wooden or stone ramps. The Greek historian Herodotus says that 100,000 men worked on the Great Pyramid in three-month shifts. Then another 100,000 went to work. This went on for more than 20 years. How were the blocks lifted into place? According to Herodotus, they were lifted with a kind of crane that rested on lower-level stones. Kingdoms unite and divide. The history of ancient Egypt may be divided into three major periods, the Old Kingdom, the Middle Kingdom, and the New Kingdom. Memphis was Egypt's capital during the Old Kingdom period. Beginning around 2686 BC, Memphis lies about 15 miles, 24 kilometers south of what is now Cairo. Even in this early period, Egyptians were making paper from papyrus fibers and writing in hieroglyphs. In time, the pharaoh's power weakened, and Egypt once again broke into separate districts. Mentuhotep II pulled the kingdom together again around 2040 BC. He built his capital at Thebes, on the Nile's east bank in Upper Egypt. His reign marks the beginning of the Middle Kingdom period. During this time, construction began on the Temple of Amon at Karnak. Asian people, called the Hyksos, rose to power in the 1600s BC. They began ruling from their capital at Avaris in the Delta, and later spread to Thebes. Egyptians learned much about the art of war from these foreign rulers. The Hyksos introduced horse-drawn chariots, bronze and iron swords, and other military gear. Timeline of Dynasties 3110 BC Founding of United Egypt by King Menes. Circa 2686 BC to 2160 BC. Old Kingdom. Circa 2040 BC to 1786 BC. Middle Kingdom. 1570 BC to 330 BC. New Kingdom. Ancient Egypt. Old Kingdom. Middle Kingdom, the New Kingdom, Conquests and Construction. Amos, a Theban prince, drove the Hyksos out in the 1500s BC. This began the New Kingdom period, with Thebes as the capital. With their new military skills, Egyptians now became a major world power. Under Thutmose III, they took over Nubia, Palestine, Syria, and northern Iraq. New lands meant new sources of wealth. Slaves, exotic woods, ivory, and precious metals and stones poured into the pharaoh's warehouses. To show off their power, new kingdom pharaohs built huge temples, monuments, and statues of themselves. Ramses II, Ramses the Great, was the greatest builder of all. He built the temples of Abu Simbel and enlarged the temple at Karnak. Scholars also believe he was the pharaoh mentioned in the Bible's book of Exodus story, in which Moses led the Hebrews out of slavery in Egypt.